Greetings from Springville Church of the Nazarene. I'm Pastor Mark Leeper, and I'm glad that you could join us online today for what I hope will be an encouraging word from God's Word, the Bible, especially in light of the COVID-19 and the coronavirus pandemic in our nation and around the world. In all my years of ministry, I don't ever recall such a time as this when people have been in such a state of panic and fear. So what's your greatest fear in life right now? What frightens or terrifies you? What makes you fret and worry? What brings you stress and anxiety? What's stealing your peace and security? Listen to what David writes in Psalm 34 and verse 4. I sought the Lord, and He answered me. He delivered me from all my fears. Don't miss those words. He delivered me from all my fears. God wants us to experience fear-free living. Yes, even in the midst of the panic and chaos around us, God wants us to experience fear-free living. So let me talk with you for a few minutes about what the Bible says about the problem of fear and the solution for fear. Let's begin with the problem of fear. The Bible indicates that my fear can be a problem for me in at least five ways. First, fear paralyzes my potential. Fear paralyzes my potential. On the very first Easter Sunday, the actual evening of Jesus' resurrection, John 20 and verse 19 tells us, The disciples had gathered together, but fearful of the Jews, had locked all the doors in the house. So here are Jesus' closest followers, the very ones who should have been out in the streets of Jerusalem shouting the good news of Jesus' resurrection, paralyzed by fear. I mean, talk about wasted potential. Talk about missed opportunity. And here's a question for you. Were the doors of the house they were in locked from the inside or the outside? It was the inside. You see, fear is always a self-imposed prison. It is a personal choice. And when we choose to respond to the circumstances of our lives with fear, we lock up our potential. We limit our possibilities. The U.S. Army jingle says, be all that you can be. <laughs> well, we can't be all that we can be. We cannot reach our full potential living in fear. Number two, fear jumbles my judgment. There are so many examples in the Bible where because of fear people exercise poor judgment. It says of Sarah in Genesis 18 and verse 15, Sarah was afraid so she lied. See, fear causes us to do things like that. King Saul confessed to Samuel in first. Samuel 15, verse 24, I have sinned, yes, I have disobeyed your instructions and the command of the Lord, for I was afraid. And on and on I could go with examples. You see, fear causes us to lose our perspective and to make poor choices. Under stress and anxiety, we're more apt to do and say and think things that are foolish. I mean, haven't you ever made a decision in duress that you later regretted? Of course, we all do. Number three, fear ruins my relationships. Fear ruins my relationships. We can go clear back to the Garden of Eden to see how fear ruins relationships. In Genesis 3 and verse 10, when God confronted Adam about his sin, Adam replied, I was afraid and I hid from you. The key word here, I think, is hid. Adam was hiding in fear. You see, fear causes us to cover up to wear masks, to not be totally truthful, to not be totally and completely transparent. In fact, the greatest block to intimacy in a relationship, whether it is our relationship with God or our spouse, our children, our parents, our friends, the greatest obstacle is fear. Why am I afraid to let others know who and what I really am? Because I'm afraid that uh, others may not like who and what. I really am. And I have all I've got. <laughs> and if others don't like the real me, I'm stuck. And so I hide the real me. Ultimately, 
Fearful people cannot give or receive love. Fear is what keeps a person from taking the risk of trust that's necessary for a healthy relationship. Fear is what causes a person to say, I'm afraid I'm going to get hurt, or maybe I'm afraid I'm going to hurt again. Number four, fear hinders my happiness. Proverbs 12, verse 25 warns us, worry can rob you of happiness. I mean, is that true? Yes. David put it this way, Psalm 55, verse 2, I am worn out by my worries. You ever been exhausted because of your worries and fears? Well, of course. More people are worn out by their worries than their work. Alfred Hitchcock once said, I turn my worries into movies. <laughs> and the truth is, we all do. And we replay those movies over and over and over again in our thoughts and dreams. And these worries and fears make us miserable. Number five, fear sabotages my success. Fear sabotages my success. Listen to Job 3, verse 25. Job said, Everything I feared and dreaded has happened to me. Think about that. What is Job saying here? He's saying that fears can be a self-fulfilling prophecies. Fear sets us up for failure. How many times have we gotten ourselves into a mess and we've cried out, I was afraid this was going to happen. We were afraid it was going to happen, and it did. By the way, have you ever tried running from your fears? I've had people tell me, we're going to move to such and such a place to get a fresh new start. When will we ever learn that running from our fears doesn't work? Listen to what God told Israel, Jeremiah chapter 42. When some of the people wanted to run away to Egypt, the war that you fear will overtake you, and the hunger you dread will follow you, God says, and you will die there in Egypt. All the people who are determined to go and live in Egypt will die either in war or of starvation or disease. Not one of them will survive. Why is that true? Because we take our fears with us, wherever we go. Years ago, author and pastor Paul Turnier wrote, Fear creates what it fears. The fear of becoming just like your father or mother causes you to focus on them and you become more and more like them. The fear that you can't keep a commitment or a resolution keeps you from making them wholeheartedly so that failure is inevitable. The fear of illness makes you feel bad. The fear of disappointing someone keeps you from acting naturally and you end up disappointing them anyway. The fear of growing old causes you to grow old prematurely. The fear of losing your friends causes you to act in such a way that actually drives them away. The fear of poverty causes many to make risky investments and they lose what little they have. Yes, fear sabotages my success. In summary then, the problem of fear negatively affects my life in at least these five ways. First, fear paralyzes my potential. Second, fear jumbles my judgment. Third, fear ruins my relationships. Fourth, fear hinders my happiness. Fifth, fear sabotages my success. So let's look at the flip side of fear. Let's look at the solution for fear. And today I want to give you three fundamental biblical solutions that are foundational, I think, to fear-free living. Number one on the list is truth. Truth. In John 8, 32, Jesus told us, you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. Simply put, the first solution, the first thing that's foundational to fear-free living is the truth. Now, studies interestingly, have shown that we have only two inborn fears. Babies are born with only these two innate fears. The first is the fear of high places or falling. And the second is the fear of loud noises. What that means is that every other fear that we have is acquired. We actually learned it. Now the good news is that if we learned it, we can unlearn it. How? by applying the truth. You see, much of what we learn in life is simply untrue. We were given incorrect information. We based our beliefs on faulty assumptions. Something our parents said, something a teacher said, something we read in a book, something we saw in a movie, something we heard through the news. 
And these beliefs need to be challenged. How? With God's truth. Why? Because when we know the truth, the truth will set us free. Let me give you an easy to remember definition of fear using the acrostic fear. F-E-A-R. False evidence appearing real. It looks like it's true, but it's not. And so we need to come against these lies with God's truth. I love the way Solomon talks about the principles of God's truth in Proverbs 3. He says, They, the timeless principles of God's word, keep you safe from defeat and disaster. With them on guard, you can sleep without fear. You need not be afraid of disaster or the plots of wicked men, for the Lord is with you. He protects you. And so the first solution for fear is truth. Number two is love. Love. Here's what the Apostle John told us, 1 John 4, and verse 18. Love contains no fear. Indeed, fully developed love expels every particle of fear, for fear always contains some of the torture of feeling guilty. This means that the person who lives in fear has not yet had his love perfected. What a verse that is. Love contains no fear. Love expels every particle of fear. Now there are basically two ways I think that love expels fear. The first is that I must receive God's love for me. I must accept God's unconditional love for me personally. And when I do that, I recognize that God knows me completely including my worries and anxieties. And he wants to, and he has the power to, help me conquer and overcome my fears. When I trust in God's love for me, my fears are expelled. In Isaiah 43, verses 4 and 5, God says, You are precious to me. You are honored. And I love you. Do not be afraid, for I am with you. Frankly, some of us cannot overcome our fears because we will not receive God's love. Earlier in that, when I read that phrase in 1 John 4, verse 18, did you catch that? For fear always contains some of the torture of feeling guilty. And that's exactly where some of us are living today, with guilt and shame. You will never be released from your fears until first you, yourself, personally, individually, experience God's love and forgiveness in your life. Now there's a second way that love expels fear, and that is that I must dispense God's love to others. 1 John 3, verses 16 through 18 makes it very clear. This is how we've come to understand and experience love. Christ sacrificed His love for us. That's why we ought to live sacrificially and not just be out for ourselves. Let's not just talk about love. Let's practice it. Friends, there are basically only three ways that we can move in life. We can move against something or someone in anger. We can move away from something or someone in fear. Or we can approach something or someone in love. When our lives are filled with God's love, we're unafraid to risk approaching others, reaching out to others. Love conquers fear. An example would be a mother who rushes into a burning home to rescue a child. Why would she risk her life to do this? Because it's her child. And her love for her child is greater than her fear of the burning building. Her fear is neutralized by her love. You see, the root of much of our fear is self-centeredness. A preoccupation with ourselves. I don't want to get hurt. I, I don't want to be a failure. I don't want to get involved. But love gets the focus off of self and onto others. And the more that I am filled with love, the less that I am filled with fear. During this global crisis, more than ever, we need to be the hands and the feet of Jesus, reaching out to those around us in love. So I must receive God's love for myself, and I must dispense God's love to others. The second solution for fear is love. The third solution is faith. 
faith. Ephesians 3 and verse 12 tells us we can come before God with freedom and without fear. We can do this through faith in Christ. Simply put, the third thing that has the power to drive away the fear in our lives is faith. I like the way the Living Bible paraphrases Ephesians 6 and verse 16. In every battle, you will need faith as your shield to stop the fiery arrows aimed at you by Satan. Satan loves to suggest fearful thoughts to us. He takes aim and he just fires away with one doubt and fear after another. And these phobias can only be overcome by faith. Faith is the opposite of fear. It is moving ahead despite our fears. It's facing our fears head on. It's taking action against our fears. And so the third solution for fear is faith. Truth Love and faith. These biblical solutions are foundational to fear-free living. Now, at the risk of sounding overly simplistic, let me ask you this. First, who is truth? Jesus. Then who is love? God. And in whom is our faith? Only the Lord. Don't miss this. The solution to fear is in a person. A faith relationship with God through Jesus. I pray that you have that relationship today. And I truly hope that this lesson on the problem of fear and the solution for fear has been helpful for you today. Instead of choosing fear, I encourage you to choose truth, love, and faith as you face the days ahead. And if we at Spring Gold Mass can assist you in any way, please... Don't hesitate to let us know. We'll continue to stay in touch through our website and Facebook pages, and each of those pages have ways that you can contact us directly. Let me close by reading 1 Peter 1 and verse 2. May God bless you richly and grant you increasing freedom from all anxiety and fear. That's my prayer for you today. Let's pray. God, thank you for this time we could share together. Right now we live in a world that is full of fear. Panic is all around us. We don't know. We're uncertain about the future. We have doubts. We wonder what's going to happen next. And God, I pray that you would just remind us that you are a God who loves us so much that we do not need to be afraid that we can trust in the truth that you have given to us. And we need to listen to that truth and apply it to our lives every day. That we need to live in the love, your love that you have showered upon us and blessed us with in such a great way. And we need to be dispensers of that love to others around us, looking for opportunities in the midst of this mess that we're in right now to love others in very practical ways. And I pray, O oh God, that you would just help us with our faith. We have faith, but we also need faith so much more than what we have. Would you increase our faith today? And would you help us, O oh Lord, to live our lives in such a way that we would honor you even during this time of chaos and confusion? Thank you that you're a God of love. Thank you you're a God that wants us to Enjoy fearless living. May we learn how to do so even in the midst of these troubled times, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you.